Welcome back to CBS This Morning. Two Cleveland police officers will not face federal charges in the shooting death of 12-year-old Tamir Rice, an encounter that helped galvanize the Black Lives Matter movement. Video from the November 2014 incident shows Officer Timothy Lohman shooting Rice seconds after Lohman and Officer Frank Garnback arrived on scene. Rice was holding a pellet gun. The officers say they mistook the toy for a real gun. We spoke to the boy's mother, who says her son deserves justice. I'm just appalled right now and disappointed and hurt. Samaria Rice says the Justice Department's decision to not prosecute the officers for her son Tamir Rice's death is inexcusable and unjust. I should have an indictment and a conviction for my 12 year old son. The 2014 shooting was caught on camera outside a Cleveland Recreation Center. A 911 caller had alerted police about a quote guy pointing a gun at people and said the person was probably a juvenile and the gun was probably fake. That information was never transmitted to the officers who responded. One opened fire on 12 year old Rice seconds after they arrived. In statements following the shootings, both officers said they thought Rice was pulling out a real gun from his waistband and claimed they gave him multiple commands to show his hands. In a statement Tuesday, the Justice Department said prosecutors found insufficient evidence to support federal criminal charges against the officers. They say the video is grainy, shot from a distance, adding that Tamir's hands are not visible during the relevant time. It was clear as day to me. My son was scared when they rolled up on him. They didn't even give him a chance to respond. Rice's lawyer, Sabod Chandra, says the video tells the whole story. He rushed upon a child got out of the car and fired his weapon immediately. And you can tell that from the video. There's no pausing, there's no deliberation, there's no calling out warnings, there's nothing. In 2015, a state grand jury also declined to indict the officers, sparking protests around the country. The Rice family, not only have they lost a child, which is bad enough, but they have been deprived of a fair process time and again. America will never give me no closure for any other family that has to go through this if they don't break this system. Officer Lohman was fired nearly three years after Rice's death for lying on his application. The family is demanding more information after an October New York Times report that DOJ supervisors denied career prosecutors 2017 request to use a grand jury to gather evidence in their investigation. It's just still so hard when you think about that and seeing that poster for Tamir Rice 2002 to 2014, 12 years old. Well, that's what I was about to say, you know? 12 years old. You know, in 2014 was also when Eric Garner was killed in New York and Michael Brown and Ferguson. You know, really started galvanizing the Black Lives Matter movement. Shalom, shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, Ba'ashim, or Kakadash, Lai'wam, Yum. Double honors to all the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom to you men and women out there doing this work diligently, making your calling and your election sure. This is Brother Kazak coming back at you with another daily milk video to the addition. Um, what we're going into is oppression, right? This is a um, another Let Me Back video off of. Uh, the couple minute video that you see, how they not um, giving Tamir Rice any honor. Um, you know, they killed Tamir Rice over in Cleveland by the Cadell Rapid Station. Uh, shot him down because he had a toy gun in his hand. Um, well, that's another brother that's not receiving justice, as you can see in the video. Um, so we're going to go into the precepts of oppression, right? Because we are oppressors of people. Those who slay us, they kill us all day long, hold themselves not guilty. And that's what the scripture says too as well. So let's get right into it. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. It says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their shepherds and their own shepherds pity them not. So who is this talking about? And right, I'm going to read that again. It says, um, Zechariah 11 and verse 5. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Best, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. So we got false shepherds that, that signed a covenant with these damn heathen. They don't pity us, right? Al Sharpton, T.D. Jakes, all the people that made a covenant with these damn heathen, right? Y'all don't pity the people. Y'all just make merchandise of the people, right? And then it says also, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. That's what you see all around the world. 
right? We'll constantly be enslaved by our possessors and they hold themselves not guilty, right? Trayvon Martin, right? Um, Sandra Bland, right? Uh, the list goes on and on. Mike Brown, right? Eric Gardner, Tray uh, uh, Tamir Rice, right? And that's what you see in the video. He was a, he was a brother, what, 12 years old they killed, right? This is the curses that's on us, man. They are our, our uh, oppressors, right? Because the Lord gave us into their hands for our disobedience, for disobeying the commandments, man. You know, they hold themselves not guilty to this day. The Lord will tell you who your enemies are. You just got to listen, right? He said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, once we got off those slave ships, we shall be sold unto our enemies, right? Not our friends, right? Who was sold? How to sign up, say, Negroes for sale, right? Us. You understand? So this oppressor, the one that has us in his possession all around the world, is constantly killing us, right? Shooting us down in the street and hold themselves not guilty. It don't make no sense, man. But ultimately, it's the curses that's on us, right? The Lord that put these curses on us. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's identify a couple curses that the Lord put on us. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going to start with verse uh, 29. It says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Right? So this is a curse that is on the Israelites. Right? This is a curse that's on the people. This is how you identify who you are. If you are God's chosen people, you will identify yourself by these curses. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 20. In verse 29, once again, it says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Right? Let's get some more curses. Verse 30, it says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt, shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Man. Right? This happened to us. This happened to us right now, but it happened to us on a broad spectrum in slavery, man. You understand? It was a time where if you get married, the, uh, if you got married, the king had to sleep with your wife before you slept with her. You know what I'm saying? Back in that day. That was an old law. You know? Our people have been cursed, man, evermore. You know, we have been oppressed evermore. You know? Through captivity, countless captivities. Through the Moabites, the Chinese through the Ammonites, the Japanese, through the uh, Ishmaelites, the Arabs, right? Through the Hamites, the uh, the real Africans. Man, we've been slaves for a long time. When the scripture says we shall be oppressed evermore, that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening to our people, man. You know, verse 31, Deuteronomy 29 and 31, it says, Thine ox shall be slain before the, thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine, eyes, th thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thy hand. So this is what you see, right? They shoot our people down in the streets, but there's no might in our hand to enact judgment on these nations for doing that to us. There's no might in our hand because our God, our power hid his face for us for a small moment, for a short moment, right? Let's see if I can get that real quick. He hid his face for a short moment. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not it. Here it is. Oh, Isaiah chapter 59. And we can start at um verse 10. It says, We grope for for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are desolate. We are in desolate places as dead men, right? 
What is this going into? Right? Why people are blind, not knowing who the hell they are. So the reason why we are being destroyed, Hosea chapter four, verse six, for the lack of knowledge, right? That's why we're being destroyed because we don't, we can't see. But even though we got eyes, right? We grope in a noon day, even though it's noon and it's bright outside, you know what I'm saying? The sun is at its highest peak, it's bright outside, but we can't see, right? We can't see the truth. We can't, we don't know who the hell we are. We still call ourselves African-Americans, still calling ourselves black, man. That's why we group, groping at noonday, trying to latch on to something, looking for a nation that cannot save us. The same nation that's shooting us and killing us down in the street, our people want them to deliver us. No, man, that's not how it goes, you know? That's so, um this let me see here. Okay. Yeah, man. You know we grow up at noon day. You understand? We are oppressed. We are mad. I was looking for a precept, but it's not coming to me. Where the Lord said he hid his face. Let me let me just look it up. A little while he hid his face, right? Here it is, found it. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 8. It says, In a little wrath I hid my face from thee. For a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Over in over in uh over in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and verse twenty nine, it said that no man shall save thee. The Lord is our Redeemer, right? He just said right here, He hid His face for us in His wrath for a little while, for a little moment, right? But He shall save us with everlasting kindness. He will have mercy on us and redeem us, right? So right now, the Lord is mad at his people, right? So that's why you see these other nations are in his hand. But it's going to be a time where the Lord is going to gather us, gather his people, his elect from the four winds, from the four corners of the earth and bring us back together. Hopefully I'm part of that number. I want to do this work diligently to make my calling and my election sure. You know, I'm not counting myself part of that number, you know, but I want to do this work to the point where I make my election sure. Right? Right? So the Lord hid his face from us in a little while, right? He was angry for us. All this time that we've been in captivity, that's a moment for the Lord, right? That's a twinkling of an eye. The, the Ancient of Days has been around forever. So what we're going through, our 70 years, 80 years, 100 years that we live on this earth is nothing compared to the, what the Lord have seen, right? What the Lord have seen happen to our people. So he said he's going to deliver us. Right? No other man is going to deliver us from this oppression. We will be delivered by our Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Right? Right? Let's get Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Because we know surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. And that's what I'm going to bring out right here, man. If you're walking around here with a smile on your face, walking around here thinking you got it all, you're not wise. You're a fool. Right? Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the mind, right? And this, a gift destroyeth the heart. So just letting you know, a lot of our people have been destroyed because they have accepted gifts from these nations, man. Have signed covenants with these nations so they can receive gifts and everything. Uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and 11, read down to 15, let you know that these wicked-ass jakes, our people signed a covenant with these heathen, and the heathen sold our people to do mischief. So what do that mean? The heathens bought our people with money, with gifts, and it destroyed their mind, right? It destroyed their mind to stop them from fighting for their people, to stop them from loving their people. They gave them a gift, money, right? They gave them money and it destroyed their mind. Now they feel like they're not oppressed no more. They don't feel like they're part of their people. They even help, they're helping the enemy constantly suppress the people so they have joined the enemies the ones who signed the contract right let me see here Let's see if i can get another one real quick let 
And truly oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart, man. And a gift destroyeth the heart. Don't be taking all these gifts out here from your enemies, man. You know, because that's going to destroy you. You're going to feel like you owe these people your life, so you're not going to do what's naturally right. You're going to do what they tell you to do because they give you gifts and they give you money and they give you all this. They give you all of that. Man, to hell with that shit, man. Follow the Lord. Exodus, let me see if I can get a precept here. Yes, here it is right here. Exodus, he got a precept to it. Exodus 23 and 8, right? We go start at verse 7. It says, keep thee far from a false matter and the innocent and the righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Verse 8, and thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise and perverted the words of the righteous, right? So don't accept no gifts, don't accept nothing, no 5013Cs or nothing, because it perverts the words of the wise. That's what you got, General Yohanna. You got uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, right? They have been perverted because they took the 5013C. They've been receiving gifts from the enemies, so it's certain things they can't teach, like the name of the Lord. Right, that's why General, uh, that's why IUIC Bishop Nathaniel called on the Most High in Christ, right? Because they cannot use Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, right? This is an ad. They cannot use. I'm listening to uh, John John Coltrane, my favorite things. That's the song that song in jazz. But um, yeah, they took a gift and it destroyed their mind. It destroyed their wisdom. It perverted their words. Right? At one point in time, they probably was doing the work to the best of their ability. Right, but then they received that gift. They received that money from the enemy. So what the enemy tell you to do, that's what you have to do because they give you that gift. The Lord said, don't take no gift, right? Do Exodus 23 and 8. And thou shalt take no gift for the gift blinded the wise and perverted the words of the righteous, right? That's another form of oppression. They want to give you that gift to oppress your wisdom, to oppress your knowledge, to oppress your wise words, right? So don't take that gift, man. You know, wake up, realize who the hell you are, man. Let's get Proverbs chapter 31 and uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and 31. Some more precepts, man, on this oppression, right? This is the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. It says, Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Envy not thou the oppressor and choose none of his ways. You have a majority of our people, they're envying the oppressor, they want his cars. They want his buildings. They want his lifestyle. They want all of this. But he oppressed us to get it. But they envy their oppressor. They choose all of his ways. Right? They want to follow Christmas. They want to follow Thanksgiving. They want to follow all the hella days. They want to follow everything that this damn enemy put out. Right? That's what they. That's what our people want to do, man. Right? Majority. Uh, majority. Two thirds. 66.6% .6 of our people choose the way of the heathen. They don't want to change. You bring change to them, they refuse it. They want to fight you, right? Because it's been embedded in them to be your enemy, right? That's what the Willie Lynch letters say. Let me see if I can get that. Here it is right here. Willie Lynch letters, right? Let's see what the Willie Lynch letters say about what they doing to us. Hmm? Let me see. This is one of this is one of Willie Lynch's things that he said do to our people. Watch this. It says, "Take the meanest and the most restless nigga, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male niggas, the female and the nigga infant, tar and feather him, tie each leg to a different horse in opposite directions, set him a fire and beat both horses to pull him apart in front of the remaining niggas." This is what they did to us, right? In the Willie Lynch that is back in our past, in the, uh, back in the, um, slavery times, right? To get order, right? Because you had you had the meanest and you had most restless niggas. You had the meanest niggas ready to fight, ready to kill a ass, right? That's what you had. But then they took that meme off. They took that mean nigga. They took that austere man, right? That wanted to die for his people, that loved his people. They took him and tarred him with feathers. And then on top of that, they set him on fire. Then on top of that, they put both legs... On, they put one leg on one horse, one leg on the other horse, while this Jake on fire, while he's tied with feathers, and they make the horse, the horses rip him apart. This is oppression, man. 
You don't supposed to envy your oppressor, right? Here go, here it is, right here. Then he says, the next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigga male to the point of death in front of the female and infant. Do not kill him, but put the fear of God in him for he can be useful for the future breeding, man. This is what they did. This is how they oppressed us, man. Made us like cattle, right? But ultimately it's the Lord that did what? It's the Lord that, uh, that put us in this captivity, man. You know? This is what is going on. It shows you how our woman is in a frozen psychological state of independency. Right? In her natural state, she will be dependent on her man. It says it right here. Right? Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this first breaking process of the female nigga. This is going into the breaking process of the female nigga, right? This is why our women have the thought press says that they have. Listen to this, right? It's ultimately because of the Lord's curses, but you have to understand these white people have done us. They have done something which is called a breaking process. Right? How they broke the pro how they broke the spirit of the man and how they broke the spirit of the woman. Right? Listen to this. It says, "Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of sub of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigga. We have reversed the relationships. This is what they've done. We have reversed the relationships. In her natural uncivilized state, she would have a strong dependency." On the uncivilized nigga male. Who is that uncivilized nigga male? The the ones the field niggas, right? The ones in the field. That's the uncivilized uncivilized nigga, right? Then you got that house nigga that wanna be like the enemy, right? But the uncivilized man is the one is is the one who uh say to hell with Esau, right? The uncivilized men are the Hebrew Israelites, man. We are the uncivilized men. We are the ones that don't take gifts, bribes, none of that shit, right? So right here it says. In her natural uncivilized state, she would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigga male. And she would have a limited protective ten tendency. So not yet. It says, it says, um, I'm going to read this. In her natural uncivilized state, she would have a strong dependency on an uncivilized nigga male. And she would have a limited protective tendency towards her independent male offspring and would raise the female offspring to, de to be dependent like her, right? But watch this. Nature had provided for this type of balance. Nature, the Lord provided for this balance right here, that the woman depend on her man for protection. And she know that the, the daughter and the son will be protected because of the man is there. In her mind, in her, in her natural state, this is how our woman is thinking. But... This is what they have done. They have done this. It says, we reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. So now all of this happening to us in the woman's presence. So now she feel like we cannot protect her, right? It says, by her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed, the ideal calls her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offsprings in reverse roles. For fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent, but physically strong. Because she has become physically independent, she will train her female offsprings to be psychologically independent. What have you got? You got the nigger woman out front and the man behind and scared. This is the perfect situation for sound sleep and economics. This is what Esau have done, right? Because they laid open the book of the law. They went into the curses and seen what the Lord put on his people. And all they did was put it in a book and taught their people how to enact those curses on us, right? So now that's what you see in front. You see the woman, loud woman in front, loud, strong, tough woman in front. Then you see a big ass Jake in the back, scared, right? Because his, his mentally he's weak, right? That's why the scripture says in um in Isaiah chapter three and verse twelve. Let's get that. It says, "As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them." 
O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths, right? This is what's on our people, right? Children have been our oppressors. What's, what was once what was once and still is a blessing from the Lord, the enemies have used it to oppress us, right? So you have a kid in this day and time, and, and you know what I'm saying? You have a kid in this day and time with the wrong woman, and 90% of them are the wrong women because the way they're thinking. You have a kid with them, they, they, you know what I'm saying, they try to use you all the way up. And if you don't follow their commandments or if you don't follow the, the laws and the statutes that that woman have set, then she will break up with you and go to the children and family, go, not children and family, sorry, she will break up with you. And then she'll go right down to the building and file a case on your ass and put you on child support. Right? That's exactly what happens. And now you got to pay her through your whole check. Some brothers, they whole checks be taken away because of these children, man. Right? But that's how Esau used the kids to oppress us. That's how Esau used our women to oppress us too. Right? You have to understand this, Yasharala. We are oppressed, man. We are oppressed threefold by our enemies, by our women, and by our children. Right? And the only way we can get out of this state is by what? Repenting. Turning back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh man. The Lord is our Redeemer. Nobody else. Right? All right, let's get Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 33. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Verse 34, Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. How will the Lord disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon, which is America, this mystery Babylon, this place? He will burn it with nuclear missile fire, thermal nuclear missile fire. So wake up and realize who you are. But over in 33, it says the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all of them that took us refused to let us go, man. They refused to let us go. They want to shoot us down in the streets. They want to hang us. They want to lock us up, but they do not want to let us go. They don't want to, uh, us to follow our God truly, man. You know, they don't want that. They want to keep feeding us sin so our power will not fight for us. That's why we have to wake up, Yashar and realize who the hell we are. Let's get Sirach chapter um, 35, right? Let's get, keep going through these precepts. Sirach 35 and um, let me see here. Sirach 35, what am I looking for? 35 and 13. He says, he will not accept any persons against the poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed, right? I'm going to read it again. Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 13. It says, he will not accept any persons against a poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. Right. He will hear the prayer of the oppressed. So right now we are oppressed in this situation. You think the Lord ain't hearing our prayers? You think he ain't hearing our cries? He is, man. You know, he said he will not accept any persons against the poor man. Who are the poor? Who is the poor man? Who's Lazarus? Right. Who's Lazarus? Who's the poor man? Who is that, man? It's us. It's Yasharala. Right. And the Lord said, he shall hear the prayer of the oppressed, but he will not accept any persons against the poor man. So all these people that have stricken us and have destroyed the, uh, Israel and make sure the name of Israel may no longer be in remembrance. Those people shall be destroyed, man, with thermonuclear missile fire. So that's why it's important to wake up, man. I keep saying it. Wake up, Yasharala. Wake up. Wake up. And it's not for the whole nation. It's only for the elect. The scripture says we do all things for the elect's sake, right? It's for the elect, man. You know? The Lord said he'll hear the prayers of the oppressed. Let's go to Isaiah 49 and 23. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. And verse 23, it says, And kings... Hold on. 
Yeah. Do, uh, Isaiah 49 and 23, it says, And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. We wait on the Lord. These people that are oppressing us, they will be oppressed. Right? The people that are oppressing us, they shall go into captivity. Right? That's the blessing that the Lord have given to us, to the people. Right? He said, wait on the Lord and he will make their kings and their princesses and their mothers your nursing mothers and 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 they, they we will make them your slaves man let's read it again isaiah chapter 49 verse 23 and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So I'm going to wait on the Lord so I won't be ashamed. I'm going to wait on the Lord so these enemies can be bowing down at our feet. The Lord said he's going to put these curses on our enemies. Right now we're bowing down at their feet. Right? But the Lord said these curses will come over to our enemies. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. So all the curses that are on us, the Lord will bring it on our enemies. Watch this. And it says, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. So all the curses that's in Deuteronomy 28 shall go to our enemies, right? They ass shall be in captivity. They ass shall be, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, broken into pieces. You understand? Let's get Revelation chapter 13 and we're going to end it. Revelation chapter 13 and we're going to start at verse uh, 9, right? It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Everybody got ears, right? So this is not what it's talking about. It says, if you have understanding, let you understand, right? Verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the, faith of the saints. So they killed Tamir Rice, right, with the sword, modern day sword, which is the gun. They killed him, they shall be put to death. There's no justice right now because wickedness wax, wax more and more, right, on this earth. But eventually the Lord will hear. Let's get this. The Lord is hearing up the prayers of the the, the Lord is hearing the prayers of the righteous right now, but eventually he's going to enact judgment. The Lord is on his way to enact judgment, right? Here it is. Let's get it. Second uh, Andrew chapter 15 and verse 8. This is what the Lord said. He said, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. That's what's happening. That's what you see on the four, on the four corners of the earth. The just complaining continually, man. That's what uh, we constantly crying up to the Lord for the affliction, um, for the oppression, for Trayvon Martin, for Sandra Bland, for um, uh, Mike Brown, for Eric Garner, for Tamir Rice, for uh, all the people that's been killed and constantly being killed by our enemies. You know, the, the righteous blood crieth unto the Lord. When you slay Tamir Rice, you think he didn't go up to the Lord and complain and cry? He did, right? He had a toy gun in his hand. And the cops pulled out. Two seconds after they pulled up, they shot him. It don't make no damn sense, man. Right? Verse 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. The word Egypt just means bondage, according to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Verse 11, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Listen, this is how you know he's not talking about past Egypt because he said this. Listen, uh, second address, chapter 15 and verse 11, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Right. So, you know, this right here, this word Egypt just means bondage. And he's talking about this bondage, right? Because he said he's going to stricken this bondage or smite this Egypt with plagues as before. Just like he did the previous Egypt, right? The Lord stricken it with the 10 plagues, right? The the 10, uh, when he turned, uh, you know what I'm saying? When he killed Pharaoh's son and, and uh, turned the water's blood and all of that, right? The Lord said he's going to stricken this Egypt, this bondage, right, that we're in with the same place as before too as well, man. And he says, and it will destroy all the land thereof. Verse 12, it says, Egypt shall mourn 
and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. We all know that plague that he's bringing. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. That plague shall be when a eye shall melt in a socket and a tongue shall melt in a mouth and a skin shall melt off their bones. That's the, that's the plague that the Lord will strike bondage with, this Egypt with, Babylon with, right? America with and all these other nations, right? That had a hand in our oppression. So hopefully this was edifying, Yasharallah. You understand? We are oppressed as at this day, right? We still got to pay, you know what I'm saying, taxes and all of that and all of this. We still getting shot down in the street, still being locked up, still uh, being hung in 2020, about to be 2021. Yes, Your Honor, we are oppressed and we need to wake up and realize that the only Redeemer, our only Savior is Yahweh, while Yahweh shot. That's it and that's all. And with that, I want to give double honors to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. By Hashem, we're cocked up. Shlai, when I'm yum, call her lion. La Abba, now we your howl. By Hashem, how much y'all come a lucky? I was shy. By Hashem, we're cocked up. Shlai, when I'm yum. Double honors to all the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom to you men out there and women doing this work diligently, diligently making your calling and your election sure. On to the next one, Yashawala. Wake up, realize who you are. Okay. Um, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Salakhayam, all call Adawamiyam. With that, I say shalom, Yashawala.